Hey everybody, today we're gonna go out and look at some insects. So hopefully you'll be able to come out and borrow some of our materials so you can take a little tour of the property and find some insects of your own. When we think of bugs, we think of all kinds of creepy crawly things. They may not all be insects. Some of them might be arthropods. Some of them might be annelids like a worm. Some of them might be arachnids like a spider. But when we think of an insect, there are some things that we can look for to know whether we have an insect or not. This is an example of an insect, and you can see that it has three body parts, a head, a thorax, and an abdomen. Those three body parts all have special functions. On the head, there are compound eyes, so typically insects have larger eyes with lots of lenses to help them to be able to see all around them so they can look out for predators. They have antenna, two antenna, and the antenna are what help them to feel around um, because they don't have ears and so they can't hear. And so they use their antenna to help them feel vibrations, to hear, and then to touch. Also, they all have different mouth parts depending on what they eat. So for example, a bee and a butterfly have a, something called a proboscis that helps them to drink nectar from a flower. But a grasshopper has a different type of mouth because it eats grass, so it has chewing parts. A dragonfly has a mouth that opens up wide so it can catch mosquitoes in flight. All insects as adults also have four wings and six legs. Now, one, two, three, four, five, six. Even when an insect is a juvenile, it still has six legs, but it does not have the wings. If you notice, the thorax is the part of the body that holds all the muscle. So that's where the wings and the legs are attached. Finally, insects have abdomens. So the abdomens are there for uh, several reasons. For one, they have little air holes that help them to breathe called spiracles along their abdomen. So that's where they breathe. They do not breathe through their nose. That's not what the function of their tip of their head is for. Um, instead, they get that air through the spiracles where that um, air goes in and out in that area. It also the function of the abdomen is also to um, lay eggs. So they usually have, the females have an ovipositor. On a bee, it's also a stinger. So the ovipositor is the part of the insect where it lays eggs in on the plant or inside of the leaf of a plant. So insects are not quite the same as some of the other critters that you might find when you go on a bug hunt. These are some of the things that you'll want when you go out in your backyard looking for bugs. You'll want a bug catcher box. This has a magnifying glass on the top so that you can see the bug a little bit closer when you catch them. Another thing you can use is a hand lens. The hand lens looks at things, who oh, magnifies them so you can see them closer as well. And this one, a butterfly net. A butterfly net or a bug net is used for many different things to catch many different kinds of bugs. But you have to be careful because you don't want to get your butterfly net stuck in tree branches or in burdock because that will ruin the net faster than you can blink an eye. Bugs can be found anywhere that there are flowers. If you watch and look carefully, you will find bugs busy doing their own things all over the place on flowers. Bugs like flowers because they drink the nectar from the flowers. If you see that bee right there, He's going and looking for the nectar, which is like flower juice at the bottom of the flower. He is so busy, he doesn't even care that I'm here. He collects that nectar and accidentally gets the pollen on his fuzz on his body 
to bring back to the hive to feed the babies. Depending on the type of insect it is, it will have a different type of baby. So there are two different types of metamorphosis. One is called complete metamorphosis, and that's what the butterfly and the ladybug go through, where the baby is called a larva, and it doesn't look anything like the adults. It has four stages where it starts as an egg, becomes the larva, becomes some kind of a pupa, and then emerges as an adult with wings. But in an insect like a grasshopper, the grasshopper emerges from the egg as a miniature adult without wings. And then it continues to uh, shed its skin or molt several times throughout its life until it grows its wings and then it's considered an adult. That is called gradual metamorphosis. So as you can see, here's a ladybug laying eggs on a leaf. All insects start as eggs. When those eggs hatch, some insects look just like their moms and dads. Some insects look a little bit different. Can you guess what kind of baby insect this one is? It's a ladybug. Would you ever imagine that? So this ladybug will create a pupa, almost like a cocoon and it will turn into a ladybug. Hmm, right now, it's just a baby. You can still see it's got six legs and it's got three body parts and it's got antenna, but as a baby, it doesn't have any wings. It won't grow the wings until it, it's an adult ladybug. Here is the pupa of that ladybug that I was just showing you. Oh, and look at that. There's a beetle. Hmm. He just landed right on my hand. He's not gonna hurt me. I'm just gonna watch him for a minute. This pupa is stuck on this milkweed leaf, kind of like with glue or a webbing that holds it there. And it changes inside of the pupa until it becomes an adult ladybug. So here you can see the adult ladybug with all of the parts. So it's got the head, thorax, abdomen, six legs, and four wings. Insects mostly have four wings, except for the very, very fast fly and mosquito. So flies, as you can see, fly very quickly all around all these plants. Can you watch them? Watch closely. You'll see flies moving very fast throughout. Flies only have two wings. Bees and wasps have four wings. Can you see the wasp? He has four wings. So the four wings still makes them fly fast, but flies are much, much faster. Butterflies, like the monarch, are also very fast insects. There's a monarch butterfly right there, drinking from the joe pie weed. Monarchs have four wings too. Can you see them? One, two, three, four. They're separate wings to help them to fly from flower to flower. You look carefully, right there. There's a milkweed beetle. Milkweed plants are amazing because they have so many different insects that live on them and rely on them for their homes. The milkweed beetle has four wings as well, but he has a hard shell over his back. So he doesn't fly as much. He spends most of his time crawling around on the milkweed, eating the milkweed. A couple of ways to use are bug boxes. The bug boxes have a cover that comes off. You can see that the cover comes off. And so what you want to do is try to capture a bug inside the box and quickly put the cover on so that you can look at the insect without being afraid of it. 
and that way you can release it safely as well. To use your bug box, you'll want to bring your bug box right up to a flower. See how I've done that? And then you just close the bug box over the top of the insect and he is stuck inside. Now you can safely look at the bumblebee while he flies around inside and you can see all the details. When you look for him or when you capture him, look for all the things that make him an insect. Look for the head, the thorax, the abdomen. Look for the six legs. Look for his four wings and his compound eyes and his two antenna. You can also look to see if you can see his mouth parts. An insect, like a bee, has a mouth part called a proboscis for sucking the nectar from the flowers. Insects like bees also have a stinger on the end of their abdomen. That stinger is there, not to sting you, but to lay eggs. But it also helps to protect their hive or protect themselves. Bumblebees and honeybees, when they sting, unfortunately won't survive, so they don't like to do it. But if they have to, they will. Wasps can sting over and over and over again. When it's time to release your insect, you simply take the cover off of your insect box and your bug will fly away. They won't bother you because they don't want to have anything to do with you. They need to go out and finish their work and get some more nectar from the flowers. When you're using your net, you want to use your net as a sweeper. So you sweep back and forth and back and forth. By doing that, you're capturing whatever insects might be on the plants that you're sweeping. Hopefully, once you do that, you'll be able to see the insects down at the bottom of your net. There's one now. Oh, he flew away. But you can take your bug box then and capture the insects that are down at the bottom. You just simply take your bug box and cover it so the insect is in there. Can you see him? And then I'm gonna take my cover and I'm going to scoop my cover underneath to make sure that the insect is in the box so that I can take a look at him. So now I've scooped the cover underneath and I have the insect inside the box. Oh, there's another insect on my arm. This one I don't want there because he's a mosquito and he will suck my blood and make my skin itch. So if we look carefully, you can see inside the box using the magnifying glass or looking through the plastic and try to figure out what kind of insect it is. You know, it's not important to know exactly what kind of insect it is. It's more fun to figure out, do I have an insect or do I have a spider? Do I have an adult insect with wings? Do I have a baby insect? Those are the things that, more, that are more fun to figure out. Sometimes it's fun to try to identify the insect itself as well. You can use different things like an insect field guide book, or you can use the app called Seek that will help you to identify it. Or you can just simply observe your insect for a little bit and then of course, release it back where it came from. Bye, bug. Always make sure and turn your net inside out to get all the rest of the insects out 
of your net before you go back to store it again. These items can be checked out from the Nature Center. We will let you borrow them as long as you take care of them. And you can also check out a book from your local library. This is our bug hunt area. So when you come here, this is the part of the bug hunt area that we look for insects that are considered decomposers. So we're looking at insects that might hide inside or underneath a log like that. This is a whole colony of ants that aren't going to be happy and looks like a few millipedes may have missed a spider or two underneath here. And of course, when you look for something, if you decide to get a closer look at it in your bug box, you can put it in your bug box and then you can um, replace it and not only replace the insect, but also replace the habitat. Because remember, this is where they live. Composers are insects that help things that were once living, like these trees, that have died and fallen to the ground. Once they fall to the ground, the sunlight and the oxygen and the rain and these critters are all what help these things to turn into soil. So over time, everything that was living will eventually break down and become soil once again. The decomposers are critters that might be an insect or an arthropod or a spider or a worm that will help to break these things down and make them become soil or decompose. Is our pollinator bug hunt area. So it's at the very end of our parking lot and you can see that there are wonderful coneflowers, black-eyed Susans, and different kinds of flowers that pollinators come to visit. So here is where you would either use your bug net there's a pollinator right there. Or you would use your bug catching box. And if you're gonna use your bug, bug catching box, all you have to do is take your box and close it over the top of a flower and put the cover on and look at what you catch. In this area, we have a lot of overgrowth because we haven't been able to use it as much this summer with the pandemic. So we do have a little bit of caution in using our nets. This flower right here is called burdock and burdock, when it dries, can get stuck on the nets. When that happens, the nets are ruined so we encourage you to just use the bug boxes in this area back here in your search for insects. Remember, as you are looking for your insects in our pollinator garden, you want to avoid coming too close to the honeybee hive. They are becoming a little bit more aggressive as the summer gets further on and it's harder for them to find their pollen and their nectar. And of course, this is our butterfly garden. So you can come in here and explore just with the bug boxes. Please leave the nets where they are to explore in this area because the bug boxes are plenty for you to be able to see some of these pollinators in action that you're able to just walk right up 
and scoop a bee or a beetle or a fly into your bug box and observe it. I hope you enjoyed the program today. I hope you come out and borrow our bug boxes and our nets and our bug -o sheets and explore the property, see what you can find and have a great time doing it. Thanks for joining me today.